Hi, everyone. We're here with Sheng, and he's got some really great features to show with Visual Studio Code for Java on project management. Sheng, introduce yourself. Hello, uh, my name is Sheng. I'm a software engineer from Visual Studio Code Java extension team. So today I'm very glad uh, to be here to share something about how to manage a Java project in Visual Studio Code. So uh, in today's demo and sharing, what we need is uh, Visual Studio Code a Visual Studio Code editor with the extension pack for Java extension installed in the Visual Studio Code. And besides that, we need a JDK installation on our, on our machine. So uh, let's just start it. So when we talk about project management, the first thing uh, we want to know is about how can we create a new Java project, right? So actually we have uh, a lot of different entries to create a new Java project in Visual Studio Code. So if in the Visual Studio Code, there is no workspace open yet, then in the File Explorer, you can see a button named Create Java Project. And click it, you can see a drop down list shows here containing all the project types we support, including No Build Tools, Maven Project, Gradle, Screen Boot, Quarkus, MicroProfile, and JavaFX. So besides this entry, you can also click Help and click Show All Commands. And then in this com command palette, you can type Java, create Java project to took out this drop-down list, or you can expand this explorer, the Java Project Explorer, and click the plus button in its navigation bar to open this uh, drop-down list. So now let's just create a new build tool project. Uh, so basically, I will usually use this kind of project to do some verification or do some code coding practicing, and also students can use this kind of project to do the teacher's assignment. So the first thing, let's uh, select a location to store our uh, project, and then let's give it a name. Uh, let's call it demo. And then you can see Visual Studio Code open a new folder inside it. And all the, all the project is scaffold. So this, this is very, very simple and super fast and very straightforward. Okay, now after uh, we have project created, the next thing we would like to know is about how to create a new Java class inside our project. So uh, uh, most people, if, uh, if you have used Visual Studio Code to write her, your Java project, you may know that to create a new file, we can uh, create a Java file inside the File Explorer to create a new Java class. Uh, but today, I will do all the project management things inside this Java Project Explorer. So just forget about the File Explorer and fold it. Or you can, uh, or let's just uh, move this uh, Java Project Explorer to a dedicated view. Uh, we can move, drag it to the left side, or if you like, you can drag it to the right side or even at the bottom side, thanks to the great extensibility of Visual Studio Code. Okay, so let's make it at the right side, and then I will create a new Java class. So what I'm gonna to do is uh, hover on the folder SRC, and then you can see at the right side, there is a plus button. We can click it to create a new class. And actually, if we right-click on this node, you can see even more actions listed in the contest menu, including create a new package, some uh, copy pass actions, rename, delete, and then let's create a new Java class and give it a name. Let's call it counter. And you can see the extension help us to uh, scaffold the class body. Right, it's very super easy. And then uh, just to save time, I have already prepared the content about this class. So let's copy paste into our editor. Uh, so this is a very simple Java Swing and AWT application. So the content of this counter class is a 
swing dialogue. You can tell that from the import statement here. And just mention one more thing. So if you want to develop an AWT project in Visual Studio Code, please remember, go to the Java Help Center and then switch to the student section and enable AWT development here. This will make sure all the features like completion and connections will work, will work correctly for the AWT related packages. Okay, so now we have already uh, had the counter class here. The next thing I would like to do is to launch my project. So I will go back to our main class and here in the main method, I will create a new instance of our counter class and then invocate the run method. Then we can uh, we, then we can run our application. So if you have used Visual Studio Code for Java, you may know that we can directly click the run or debug code length shortcut above the main method. Uh, but, but today I would like to use uh, another way to launch our project. So go to the Java Project Explorer, and uh, here for our project notes demo, you can see there is a play button at the right side, right? So we can just click it to launch our project. So this is really simple. And you can see our swing application is a simple click counter. Once I click the button here, our click number will increase. Okay. So now we have talked about how to create a new class, how to launch our project in the Java Project Explorer. So the next thing I would like to introduce is about how to add dependencies into our project. So let's write some unit test for our project. So to, uh, so to do that, we need to add testing dependencies into our project. One way to do that is we can switch to the Testing Explorer and click the Enable Java Test button here. By clicking this button, our extension will help you download the, the related testing jars and add it to your project. Or if you have already downloaded that jars, so you can directly introduce those dependencies in the Java Project Explorer. So here you can see a node called Reference Library. We can click this plus button to add the jars. So find the jars I already downloaded and select it. Then you can see the JAS has already added to our project. And if you want to remove it, you can click the minus button here. Okay, so now I will start to add some test cases. So we go back to the counter class and in the editor, right click it, select source section and select general tests. So we will add some JUnit 5 tests and uh, name the test class counter test. And I would like to test the method increase count. Okay, then you can see our extension automatically scaffolds the test class and the method body for you. And we can just directly run it. See, so th that works. So this is how we can uh, introduce uh, or add dependency jars to our project in the Java Project Explorer. Okay, then the last thing I would like to mention is about how to configure the class path of the project. To do that, we can right click on the project node and there is an item called configure class path. Click it, you can see there is a view here that shows all the class path component of our project, including our source locations. This is the folder we store our source files the output location to store our compiled class pass file, uh, the class file, and we can configure the JDK runtime and the reference library. So here you can see the jars we just added to our project, and you can also add more or remove them in this page. So, so the, we have talked about how to create class, how to launch the project, add dependency, and configure the cl class pass. And actually the Java Project Explorer can do more. So 
I, I want to show them one by one this time, but if you have time, you can try to play with it. Right click on each node, you can find the different node has different options here. And they have, uh, the Explorer has more options in the overflow button here. So let's just give it a try. And I didn't know that this, 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 is, this is all new to me, configured uh, class and job. <laughs> this is really cool. Yes, this is very useful, especially when the project has no build tools. So without the help of Maven or Gradle, we can use the Java project, Java project extension to do the class pass configuration stuff. Okay, so, so the last thing about project management is we, we have the project right now. And I will, I would like to export the project to our Java file. How can we do that? Because if we have a Maven project or a Gradle project, this is very easy. We can just run Maven package or Gradle build from the terminal. And then our build tool will help us to build the Java file. But our project here is a project without any build tools. So can we do that? The answer is yes. Still in the Java Project Explorer, you can see this arrow-like button. This is the button we can use it to export the Java. So click it, then there, there, is, there will be a wizard here. The first thing we need to do is select the main class. It's the app. And then select the elements we want to export into the Java file. So I would like to include the out, output compiled class, but I don't want to include the testing dependencies. So I deselect the testing jars and select OK. Then just suddenly the extension help us to export the Java files at the project root. So we can see at the root, we have a jar file demo.jar and we can launch it. This is the, just a quick dialog, right? So, so uh, you may have another question in your mind. So, because each time when we click this button, we need to go through the wizard to do some selection. Yeah, that was I was thinking. Like, it, it makes me dependent on the, the tooling uh, a lot, though. Uh, so, uh, show me some some nice little tricks uh, around that. Yeah. So, can it be even more convenient? The answer is yes. So, actually, we provide a, a VS Code integrated task, which can just execute the task to export the job in just very a few clicks. So to do that, we need first generate a task definition for the export job job. To do that, let's click the terminal and select configure task and select the task type Java export job. Then you can see the extension automatically help us scaffold the task, task so definition cool. here. Yeah, that, that is cool. As with yeah, yes, and with this uh, task definition, the next time we can click terminal and select run task, and then select the task we just generated. Yeah, and then you can see you can see the extension help us to export the job, and also all the fields here can be customized according to the user's own demand. So. Uh, all the details about uh, the how to how can we change the fields, so we can go to our uh, GitHub repo in our wiki page. There is a document called "Export Your Project to a Java File." You can find all the details in this document. Okay, so yeah, so that's all about my demo today. Thank you so much, Sheng. That was really impressive. And I love how you just seamlessly uh, went from uh, one mechanism of project management to another to right at the end to uh, export your jar. Um, and I'm sure the viewers there will really appreciate that. Okay, bye-bye. Cheers, everyone.